As widely expected, the Bank of Canada delivered its second consecutive rate cut today. Uh, joining me for his reaction is TD Senior Economist Andrew Hensick. And Andrew, uh, was this a surprise to you? You know, not really. Um, we'd seen some deterioration in the macro data. The labor market has definitely softened up. Most recent retail sales numbers uh, came in soft as well. And so, you know, when you take the totality of those things combined and with inflation coming in, uh, clocking in at 2.7% in June, combine all those things and, and you know, it, 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 made, made, it made sense that the, that the bank would move today. Okay, now do you think that the Bank of Canada is going to pause now and wait to see what the impact is of these last two rate cuts or could we see further rate cuts later this year? Right, so that's the, that's the key <laughs> question. From our, from our lens, uh, we're expecting a pause at, the, at this stage. Um, I, I did. I mentioned, you know, the labor market has softened. Uh, there, there, there are developments happening that that make the bank confident that inflation is trending in the right direction. That said, there are a few things bubbling under the surface. Um, you know, uh, inflation from the services sector and specifically sh shelter costs are still running a little bit hot. Uh, some of the near-term trends in core inflation are a little bit worrisome. From our so when you look at that from our view, the bank will probably take a pause here, see how things shake out, see how, see how some of those things evolve in the coming months, and then, and then make another decision. Okay, talk to us about uh, your outlook for the Canadian dollar on this expected policy gap between Canada and the U.S. So for the Canadian dollar, um, what, what really drives it is we look at how longer term yields are evolving. Uh, from that lens, we have the bulk of the convergence between Canadian, the Canadian 10-year and the U.S. 10-year happening next year. So what that means for the CAD is we have it hovering around 72 cents for the rest of 2024 and then firming up in 2025 as, as those longer-term yields kind of start to come together. Okay, and uh, any implications at all for the Bank of Canada rate policy uh, given the shifting U.S. political landscape ahead of the U.S. elections coming up? Elections sure do make headlines, right? <laughs> but I think for the Bank of Canada, and, and we saw it a little bit in the statement, the focus is on domestic factors. They want to, they're, they're really looking at how inflation and the Canadian economy is evolving day to day. So from their lens, you know, they're looking at things like how, what's happening in the labor market, what's happening with shelter inflation. Um, are, are, are they seeing trends continuing there that, that make them feel confident that that they're fulfilling their mandate. Um, while, while the U.S. election does certainly make headlines, um, I think their focus is a little more domestic. Okay, so let's go back uh, to uh, a focus on the domestic. Um, another big risk, of course, is the housing market. Do you see the risk of re inflation reaccelerating uh, or the housing market heating up after these multiple rate cuts? So it's kind of the key question. You know, from, from our view, um, we have, you know, rates are still in restrictive territory. Right. So we've had two cuts, but interest rates are still high, especially relative to the pre-pandemic period. Um, so from that lens, that's going to kind of work to keep a cap on home prices and, and a real, real acceleration in the housing market. Um, but as they continue to come down, you know, we do anticipate that you know, housing price growth kind of starts to turn positive in year-on-year -year terms towards the back, half, uh, back end of 2024 and into 2025. Um, for inflation itself, you know, there's of course upside <laughs> upside risks, but our, our view is that you know that's likely not going to be the case, given that rates are still high relative to history, and remain in what we like to call restrictive territory. So a, a quick recovery and a quick uptick isn't really our base case right now. Okay, you mentioned the upside risks to inflation. What are the indicators you'll be watching as the Bank of Canada considers its next move? So, I mean, you have your classics, the core, the core inflation. What are the near-term developments happening there? One that the Bank of Canada mentioned in today's release and one that we're keenly interested in is what's the breadth of inflation look like, right? How, how, how many price categories are rising faster than 3% uh, annually? Um, you know, that, that gives you a sense of how, how widespread, you know, price gains are. Um, and then, of course, the labor market. Um, is, is the economy able to sustain the kind of population growth we've seen in terms of absorbing that, that extra labor? Um, in recent months, the answer has been no, not really. Is that trend going to continue into the future or, or, or are things going to reaccelerate? So those are kind of the key, key factors that we think the Bank of Canada is going to be looking at and that we certainly will be as well. Great insights, Andrew. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Thank you very much for having me, Anthony.